Hey there! Welcome to this video on how to draw a cute anime girl. To give you an idea of what this video is going to teach you, this is what you're going to have drawn at the end of this tutorial, hopefully. So, let's get started! First of all, you want to think about what you want to draw, like the pose, the camera placement, the facial expression, you know, all that kind of stuff. If you can picture what you want to draw in your head, then good for you. But if you're having difficulty doing that, this is how I make it easier for myself. So what I want to draw here is Cheryl looking at the camera or the viewer while smiling and holding up a peace sign. Simple enough, right? So instead of diving straight in, I draw a little stick figure doing the same pose. This helps a lot when drawing the real thing. Now we actually want to start with the drawing process. I like to use sketches when I draw because I have no idea what I'm doing. I like to use sketches when I draw because it makes my drawings look better. You've probably seen people who can draw without sketching, and I do have some friends who do that, and when I see them draw, I'm like, it, is this what magic is? Anyhow, I'm getting sidetracked. First, what you want to do is to draw a circle, is to draw a circle, to draw a circle. First, what you want to do is to draw a shape that's roughly circular, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to look okay. And the circular shape is going to be the base of Charles' face. Then, what we want to do is to show ourselves which direction Charles facing. And to do that, we use two lines, one across the face horizontally and one across the face vertically. One shows us where the face is looking in terms of up to right, and the other shows us where the face is looking in terms of up and down. And the next step is to section off the front of the face. So you may have noticed that human faces are not exactly round spheres, and so that's what we're going to be addressing now. We take the distance from the narrow side of the face, and we section off roughly the same area on the other side of the face, taking account of our perspective, of course. This will help a lot when we're drawing the chin, and believe me, we're going to need it. So to draw the chin, we want to come down from one side of the face. The lines don't entirely go straight down, but slightly towards the center, and after a certain point, it goes to the vertical line, then it goes back up on the other side of the face in the same way, and there we have it, the chin. Um, so you might be asking, where does it join the vertical line? How do you know how long the chin is? And um, I'll try to explain, but this part is complicated, sorta. So the reason I was so general on my instructions on how to draw the chin was because there are many, many ways to draw chins, and it all depends on the character that you're drawing. If your character has the longer face, you probably want to draw the chin longer. If your character has a very angular face, you want to draw it this way. And if your character has a rounder face, you can draw it like that. So as to why I draw Charles' chin this way is because that's how her chin looks like. So um, the chin's probably going to be a little bit hard to draw, I'm not gonna lie. But we're starting to get into the more interesting part. Next, we want to draw the eyes. <sighs> I'm going to first show you how I draw the eyes. And I'll try to explain as well as I can as to why I draw them that way. First, I make an eye line by measuring the top and the bottom of the face and drawing a line at the center. And then I draw in the upper eyelids. Then I come down on the side of the eye and then I very softly draw the lower eyelids. Then I do the same on the other side of the face. First I draw the upper eyelids, then the side of the eye, and then the lower eyelids. You're probably going to have two questions at this point. Why is one eye wider than the other? And that's because of the perspective. Charles slightly turning to one side, so the eye that's closer to the viewer or the camera is going to be a little bit wider in comparison. Why are you not drawing in the irises yet? And that's because we're trying to make sure the eyes line up. If you draw one eye to the end and then draw the other one afterwards, you're most likely going to have a bad time trying to make them match. So that's why we're drawing the eyelids first, and then the iris is in later. Since Cheryl's looking at the camera, her iris on the far side is going to be right around here, and the iris on the near side is going to be right around here. As for how I know where they're supposed to be drawn, it pretty much has to do with imagining where the eyes are looking at. Again, it comes down to practice and experience, but here are some different directions the eyes are looking at that you can see. You can pause this if you want to take a longer look at it. Now we can make the eyes look prettier. We're going to draw them eyelashes. One each on the side of the eyes and tiny ones on the lower eyelids. There are many, many ways to draw eyelashes, but this is the way I do it. 
because that's how Gerald's eyelashes look. Next, we want to draw the eyebrows. So basically, you want to draw the eyebrows according to the character's facial expression. Here, we want to draw Cheryl smiling towards the camera. So the eyebrows are going to arch up. And so that's why we're going to draw them like this. Then we want to move on to drawing the nose. Here's where the vertical line comes in really handy. Since Cheryl's turned to one side, we want to come down from the far eyebrow and onto the vertical line. And this will help us draw her nose right here. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can draw noses, just like everything else. And here are just some examples of how you can draw them. You can pause this if you want to take a look at it. Next, we want to draw the mouth. We can take a look at our little stick figure drawing to figure out how we want to draw it. We want to draw Cheryl smiling, so we can just draw simple little lines like these in order to do that. We draw the mouth like this because on actual humans, the mouth line, or whatever that's called, is darker on the ends of the lips and much less at the center. And that's why we draw them like that. Okay, so we're almost done with the drawing, so let's move on to Cheryl's hair. Thankfully for us, Cheryl has a very simple hairstyle. And by us, I mean me. It's way easier for me to explain Cheryl's hair compared to my other characters. So let me first explain how I understand hair. So basically, there's two ways that I draw hair. This is not fact, this is how I understand it. You can either pick a point for hair to come out from, or a line across the head where the hair comes out from. And then depending on the hairstyle that you want to draw, you bring the hair out. This generally makes hair look a lot more natural if you're just starting to learn how to draw. Now that I've told you this, you can clearly see that Cheryl's hair is separated right around here in a line. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take an imaginary line here and then start drawing her hairstyle like so. Generally speaking, you want to use curves for hair unless you're um, drawing straight hair. So, uh, yeah. Then next, we're going to draw hands. <sighs> Anyhow, we're going to draw our hand. And don't worry if the hands you draw don't look good. You'll get better the more you draw it. We know that we want to draw a hand with a peace sign for this drawing. But one thing to think about first is where we should be drawing the hand. For me, if I make a peace sign in the same pose, my fingers end right around my nose, and the base of my fingers are right around my chin. So we'll first start by drawing a roughly rectangular shape for the hand. A good way to figure out how big or small this shape is, is to remember that the base of the hand is roughly the same size as the distance from the chin to the nose vertically, and from the center of the face to one side of the face horizontally, generally speaking. Then we'll draw two fingers that are going to be making the peace sign. The length of the fingers are roughly the same as the hand, so we can keep that in mind to prevent the fingers from being too long or too short. I tend to draw the fingers like so, with the fingertips shaped like this. But in general, it helps looking up references when it comes to hands, because trying to draw them from your imagination is really, really hard. Next, I'll be drawing the other three fingers, and you can try making the peace sign yourself if you're having some difficulty drawing it. I find that for fingers that are bent, sectioning their joints is a good way to make it easier for me to draw them. The thumb's different from the other fingers, but you can still think of it as a thicker finger that has only two joints instead of three. I mean, it's not really true, but... And we're done with the hand. Now, I would end this tutorial here, but Cheryl being a floating head with a hand doesn't really feel complete. So I'm going to draw her neck and her shoulders. For me, the neck is usually just drawing two lines, erasing and redrawing them until it feels right. But I'll try to explain my rationale for why I draw the neck like I do. Basically, if you look at a person from the front, the neck is aligned with the center of the face. But it's also to the back if you look at a person from the side. So here, I try to imagine where that point would be and draw the neck. That's all a little bit complicated though, so you can just draw and erase it until it looks right. Again, that's how I do it. Then we're going to draw the shoulders. 
If you try making the pose yourself, you can see that the arm that's not doing the peace sign is a little bit higher, and the arm that's doing the peace sign is a little bit lower, so we're going to draw the shoulders to reflect that. If you're having trouble imagining where the shoulders are, either drawing the center line for the torso or creating a rectangle for the torso helps quite a bit in my experience. Now, it wouldn't be appropriate unless we draw her shirt and her choker, so I'll be doing that. The shirt's relatively simple, you just imagine it coming down from one side, down to the center of her torso, and then back up on the other side. The choker's a little bit more complicated, you have to imagine two circles around her neck, and then connect them, then draw a little thingy on the center for the knot, and then draw little ribbons out of it. So, I'm going to end my drawing process here, but if you want to refine this drawing more, you can erase this drawing softly with an eraser if you're drawing on paper, and then draw over it without the sketch lines, or you can draw on a new layer if you're using PC or a tablet. I'm just going to fast forward this part because there isn't really much to explain about, you know, drawing line art over sketches, so I'll see you in a bit. And here we have Cheryl. That was a lot more explanation than I expected to do, but I hope this helps. So if you have any questions or anything that you want to say, I'll be making a post on my Twitter where you can write your thoughts or your grievances with the video, and I'll try to make a follow-up video on things that I can explain more, or questions that a lot of people have asked. Last but not least, scrolling on the screen right now are all the patrons that have supported me since the goal to make this tutorial was reached on my Patreon, which was, um, a year ago. This is not a recruitment drive. I just wanted to include them in something to thank them, because my Patreon's basically a support me if you like my stuff kind of thing. I think this is the part where I'm supposed to tell you to like and subscribe and hit the bell and all of that. But considering how long it took for me to make this video on... Yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm gonna hold off on it. I'll hopefully be making a follow-up video to this, so I'll see you all there then. Until then, take care out there!